Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. I'm Sriram and this video is part 2 of our color switch game which we're making on Scratch 3. Now in case you've not watched part 1, I will leave a card for you right here. In this video we'll be dealing with the ball movement and therefore the subsequent scrolling. We'll also be adding in a hand so that we can actually see this mechanism work. Let's begin by going into the hand sprite. Go to variables and create two new ones for the sprite only, x and y. Now when we receive init, we can set those uh, two values to be 15 and negative 140. Now you could play around with this y value and the x value as well, although I'd recommend you stick around with those. Once you're done with this, you can click on the ball and we can do a similar thing for the ball as well. When we receive init, we're gonna have two different variables we're gonna create for the sprite only and we'll set the x value to be zero and the y value to be negative 110. The only difference between these two is that after these two things are set up, I will add in a show to make sure the ball shows up when the game starts. Next, let's go back into variables and create two different ones. The first one is going to be called y velocity or y well for short. I'll set this for the sprite only. The next one is going to be scroll y, I'm going to do this in all caps to signify that this is a public variable for all the sprites. This is very important and in case you don't get this right, you're going to be messing up the entire game. That will be all for the inits. Now we can head back into the stage and broadcast another message, a new one this time called start game. This is going to be signifying the beginning of the game and once this message is broadcasted, all the subsequent messages will be done within the game itself. So the ball sprite is going to be broadcasting messages to the other sprites which are going to be following it based on that. Now we can get back into the ball sprite and have a when I receive start game. This code is going to be quite jumbled up and it's going to be a little bit messy in case you do it all at once. So what I'd recommend is you use two blocks and just have the scrolling code within this message itself. I'll create the first block called ball engine and this engine is going to have all the main part of the ball code. So this is going to include the key presses, the collisions and pretty much the rest of the ball physics stuff. Let's now define our ball engine. I'm going to start off by checking in case three events are met. The first one is going to be if the up arrow key is pressed, the second one if the mouse is down and the third one if is if the space key is pressed. In each of these events, we'd want the ball to jump. And for the ball to jump, we could do two things. We could either change the Y velocity or we could change the Y position directly. Changing the Y position would give us a very, very choppy result. And since we're using variables to do this, the whole point of the Y velocity was to regulate this Y position. So have a set Y velocity to six. And since we are setting Y velocity to six, we also need to make sure that there is some form of friction so that the ball you know, consistently comes to a stop and it doesn't keep going up infinitely. To do this, we can change the Y velocity by negative one after each game tick, um, but we also need to be a bit careful so that the velocity doesn't go down too quickly. What we can do is have in a condition that checks and does this only if the Y velocity is greater than negative 20, so that when the body is at free fall, it doesn't fall down too quickly. Now the whole purpose of the Y velocity was to regulate the Y variable, and hence what we can do here is change the Y position by the Y velocity. Till this point, I've not explained how the scrolling mechanism works, so I think it's a good idea to pause and do it right now. Imagine that you are in a glass walled elevator and you're going straight up along the Earth's y-axis into the sky. Assuming that your head was stationary and you couldn't tilt around, as you move up you're going to see a bunch of obstacles. Let us assume that in this case they were birds. Let us further assume that those birds were all stationary and they weren't really moving about. It is just you who is moving around. In this case, what we realize is that at every single point in this y-axis, we're gonna be seeing a different image. The displacement of the elevator from the start of the y-axis is what we'll consider the scroll y. Now this example may seem like a theoretical absurdity, but it very, very closely resembles what's actually going on. We could just replace the elevator with the ball and the different boats that are stationary with our color switch obstacles 
and that is going to be our entire picture. So getting back to our code, what we can do is simply set the scroll Y to be whatever the Y position is. Now this would work pretty neatly, but it's gonna lead to a bit of stuttering and the movements are gonna be too abrupt. What we can do to smooth this down is instead to change the scroll by, by the round value of the difference between y minus scroll y divided by five. What this would do is to distribute the change in the y position of the scroll y um, through five different ticks. So what we wouldn't see is the ball suddenly jerking upward. Once you're done with this, you can also set up a base case. We wouldn't want our ball to constantly keep falling once it's already hit the hand, basically at the ground level. To do this, we can simply check if scroll Y is less than zero, and if it is, we can just set it back to zero. Since we have both our ball engine as well as changes within our scroll Y already coded, we can now get into the last function, which I'll be calling go to coordinates. While you're making this function, make sure you hit the checkbox which says run without screen refresh. Within this, I'll be having just one line of code and that is we go to the X position of the X variable and the Y position of the Y variable minus the scroll Y variable. For the other sprites, I'll be having a similar function. However, I'd also be adding in a show or hide depending on the scroll Y. In this case, however, I don't have to do that since the ball is always going to be visible. Let's now insert the go to coordinates function right after we set the scroll Y to zero, but outside the if then. And once we're done with this, we can finally broadcast our game tick message. Once you're done with this, it's important to realize that the game tick needs to be constantly broadcasted. And to do this, we can use either a repeat until or a forever loop. In our case, we'd want to use a repeat until since at some point the player is going to die and at that point we'd have to stop broadcasting game ticks. But at this point, since we're just using the basics of this game, we could use a forever loop and change this later. Now let's get back into the hand sprite. Here I'll be creating a function which is similar to the previous one called go to coordinates. I will make sure I select the checkbox which says run without screen refresh, but I will also add in two input values, X and Y. Now while we're defining this function, I will say go to X and Y based on those two parameters and I'll also be adding in an if else. Within this if else, I'll be having a split and condition and first we'll check if the X value is equal to the X position and the Y value is equal to the Y position. If these two conditions are met, we can show and otherwise we just hide. This may seem tautological and totally useless at first. After all, I've just asked a sprite to go to an X and Y position and within checking if the sprite's X and Y position are equal to those X and Y values which we just asked the sprite to go to. However, what I'm making use of here is a specific scratch bug. If we ask the sprite to go to an X value whose absolute value is greater than 240 or we do that for a Y value where its absolute value is greater than 180, we'd basically be doing something else. The sprite wouldn't go to those coordinates because those coordinates really don't exist. They just go to the extreme of the X or Y position you asked it to go to. So for example, if we entered in an X coordinate of negative 320 and the Y was within the range, let's say 50, then the coordinate it is going to go to is negative 240 Y50. Basically, it's gonna remain at the extreme of the particular axis and it's not going to go beyond that. So in such a case, these two conditions wouldn't be met and hence the sprite would hide. This is just a clever way of saying if the sprite is within the range of the screen, then show it, but if it's not, then we hide it. Let's now use the go to coordinates function. Grab a when I receive tick and put the function on there and add in these parameters. For the X, we just add in the X variable and for the Y, we say Y minus scroll Y. Before we end this video, I think it's important to make sure that the ball can bounce off the hand. So head back into the ball sprite into the ball engine. And once we change the Y by the Y velocity, we can add in a go to coordinates, then repeat until. And we do this until we're not touching the hand. So in case we are touching the hand, what we'd wanna do is to change the Y position by one and then go to coordinates. 
Since we have touched the hand, we can assume that we'd want the ball to stop as the ball has basically hit the ground. So we can also set the Y velocity to be zero. Okay, so that's enough coding for today. Let's test out a program and wow, does it work like a charm. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.